my name is Rutendo Nyamuda and welcome to another exciting episode of In My Twenties. In my twenties. So we all have goals and dreams and visions that we want to achieve, especially this year, it being 2019, the year of the breakthrough. And so today's guest is going to show us how we can take motivation and turn it into inspiration and ultimately cultivate daily inspired action that we can take to achieve these goals. So I'm very excited to add another member to the In My Twenties family. And without further delay, here he is. Hi, my name is Jerry Sam. I work at Adam Gray during the day and by night, I'm a life coach. Now on every episode of the In My Twenties podcast, my guests always come through with these double flip sunny side up eggs, scramble it, put it on toast, add some bacon, epiphany moment, mind moment or gem moment. And this is just one of them. The Greeks said, know thyself, be thyself, love thyself. So before being, we need to first know What does knowing ourselves mean? It means knowing your values, knowing what inspires you. The In My Twenties podcast is split up into three sections. In the first section, we get to hear a little bit about Jerry's career journey. In the second section, we dive into today's topic, which is titled Motivation versus Inspiration. And rounding up all three sections is a conversation about the Twenties journey and what it's really all about. So without further delay, Let's get straight into it. So, Jerry, um, so where yeah. did you grow up? A little bit about your background. I grew up in Johannesburg, went to school in St. John's, did my undergrad at UCT in mechatronics, did my master's in biomedical engineering, and after that, I got a job at Alan Gray. And during that time, I had a little bit of a midlife crisis, or well, not midlife, quarter life crisis. Mm-hmm. Um, didn't want to get into corporate and but I'm glad I did. Mm-hmm. And in that time, I, I invest a lot of myself and, and my money into personal development. And, and through that, I got certification into personal development and, and coaching, life coaching. Mm-hmm. And I'm, I'm truly, truly grateful for it. It's been a game changer. Mm-hmm. Changed a lot of my views in life. And it's helped me to broaden my sp- perspective. Okay, fantastic. And I just want to ask, so you said you had, you were a little bit against corporate. So I want to know, what did you have against corporate? Why didn't you want to go into corporate? Was it the whole rat race? Was it the idea that you had to, I don't know, work up a ladder? Was it the construct of corporate? Yeah, well, it's, it's maybe it's just not corporate. Maybe it's just working for someone. Mm. Maybe it's the whole eight to five thing. Not, you know, we get the stigma that, you know, you, you're going into this big building and you're a robot mm. and not doing the things you love doing. Mm. And... Yeah, you know, you're just being worked to the bone. Uh, that's the idea I had. Okay. Um, but it's, it's all about changing perspective, and okay. and that's really what's helped me. Okay. And now being in it, you feel like it's a little bit different. And yeah, also exactly. It's being different, and, and, and being in it with changing my my way of thinking, changing my how I see it. Mm-hmm. I see it as as a place for helping me to learn, to build, to grow. Mm-hmm. Um, helping me to develop my, my, my software development skills. Mm. It's giving the means to, to pay for my personal development courses. Okay. I think it's actually a bargain, mm. me working there. I'm, I'm truly grateful to, to be at Alan Gray and working. Okay, fantastic. And I have to ask, Jerry, how old are you? Because I know you've actually just recently started working. Yeah, well, it's my 10th month working at Alan Gray. Okay. Um, 11th month. Okay. I'm 26. 26. Yeah, turning okay. 27th, yeah. Turning 27th. Yeah. Still very young, 11 very young. months in the corporate game and so many lessons already, so many life lessons that you've learned. It's a new year, um, people have new goals and I know you're a big advocate for inspiration and not so much motivation. How would you summarize or define the two, inspiration versus motivation? So motivation, someone telling you to do something you don't want to do. Mm -hmm. So motivation is an external force, that someone's pushing you to do something. Whereas inspiration is a calling from within. Mm -hmm. If you look at the word inspiration, break it up, it says in, spirit. Mm -hmm. So there's a calling from within you, you just naturally have the hard workship, 
the, the reliability, the discipline. It's all automatic and you'll function by itself. So, so you're just like, like a 10 year old kid. He'll just go play games because he loves playing games. He doesn't have to be reminded to go play games. Mm. Um, so, so that's the fundamental difference. Motivation is someone telling you to do something you don't want to do. Mm, mm. Yeah. Okay, fantastic. And inspiration, as you mentioned, is all of the, it's coming from the inside. Yes. One of the big things I think at the beginning of the year is everyone talks about fitness and working out and becoming a fitness junkie. And I know you love the gym and I know you exercise quite a bit. What is your, instead of having someone telling you to, I guess motivation would be like to someone, you need to lose the weight yeah. or whatever yeah. it is. Go lose weight. Go lose weight. What the is gym. the inspiration that you have to go to gym? So... So, so how, how do you, you're basically asking how do I get from being motivated to go to gym to being inspired to go to gym? Yes, yeah. So then you ask yourself, how does going to gym benefit my highest values? Mm-hmm. And your values are, are the things that you hold closest to your heart. Okay. Things you have a high priority on. Like a kid has a high priority in games. He has a high value on, on games. Mm. I have a high value on personal, uh, personal development, on reading, mm. on um, my career. Mm-hmm. And I know that exercising benefits those values mm. it helps me to be more productive mm. helps me um, to to stay up later in the evenings mm. helps me it gives me more energy I'm more focused I understand I mean, you can read plenty of articles about fitness it'll tell you it helps you with your your concentration mm. um, there are also physical aspects to it you know, I, I like looking good mm. uh, I like having having a, a good body I think um, my, my girlfriend appreciates it <laughs> um, yeah, I think that's okay. how you convert. You, you keep listing the benefits of, mm. of how to be, what, how would it benefit mm. your values? Mm. I know you have a high value on, on your podcast. Mm. So you ask yourself and you stack the benefits yeah. of how fitness will, will benefit your podcast yes. and your career. I know you have a high value on career. Mm. Um, you, you feel less sluggish. Mm. It really comes to that quote from, I can't remember who it's from, but a lot of them say it. Yeah. Simon Sinek or, 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 yeah, they say, when the wires are big enough, the house will take care of itself. Mm. And exactly the same thing when, when I say list the reasons why you want to do the fitness. Create mm. the reasons. Mm. Um, and, and naturally, until, until the heart opens, you, yeah. you'll naturally want to go work out. I yeah. promise you. Yeah, yeah. And when you're talking about values, what's very interesting is, so for example, for me and my podcast, I, because I place a high value on my podcast, if someone's like, oh, we need to do something and I know I need to edit, I'll say, no, I'm going to edit. Yeah. But not to say that gym is not necessarily my highest value, but it's not my lowest value. I can go a couple of days without gymming. Not because I don't enjoy it and I don't know the benefits. I just don't have that much of a high value. Yeah. Whereas, I mean, even family. If my family is like, hey, we need something, I'll jump. I'll be like, yes, what do you need? Exactly. Certain friends, depending on how I value them. Exactly. So <laughs> it's, about, so it's about shifting the value of fitness, which is from, it's on a lower tier to a much higher tier. How so, do you do that? So you ask, you ask, how does it serve my highest value? How does okay. it serve my purpose? Okay, okay. How does me going to the gym serve... How does, it, how does it serve my mission? Okay, How okay. does it serve my purpose? Okay, okay. You keep listing the benefits. List, okay. list it, list it. 20 okay. to 50, I promise you, you you'll start realizing, shit, yeah. I, need, I, I want to go to the gym. I'd love to go to the gym. Yes, yeah. yeah. Okay, fantastic. And then, so I'm going to jump to, now we're in the middle of the year. So now it's June, right? Okay. So now you've been exercising, you've been working out, you've been reading, you've been doing all of these things to inspire yourself to either lose the weight or to start something new to get a new skill but you hit this plateau and you can't get past you know that ceiling where you're just like I'm not losing any more weight or I'm not deriving the the benefits or the utility diminishing marginal utility as the economists say and what do you do to get past that point where you're like there's nothing left in me I've got nothing more to give I'm not seeing anything more I think you're asking um so there's like an emotional blockage. Mm, or a slump. Yes, an emotional blockage. That's exactly it, yeah. I think you'll, you'll, never, you'll never get support without challenge. You'll never get challenged without support. Mm. Um, I think w- when it comes to dissolving fear, it's really just asking how, how does that challenge benefit me. Mm-hmm. I think a lot of people, they set these New Year's goals um, and they come in like, maybe till February and then they stop and they stop doing their goals mm. the news, their New Year's resolutions mm. it, it fails and one of the reasons for that is because they don't align their goals with their values mm-hmm. um, it's, it's like telling Usain Bolt 
to go be the best swimmer in the world. He has no value on swimming, so why would you want to do that? Mm. So it's important to to align your goals with your values um, when you're planning and when you're looking to achieve what you want to achieve. Make sure your goals are aligned to your values. Mm-hmm. Else you're just going to defeat yourself and you're going to yeah, you're going to be depressed. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And <clears throat> sorry, just coming back to that emotional blockage part, and I think also just the hardship. So, I mean, something that we've been discussing without going into too much detail is that at some point there, it might be something that you haven't dealt with in your in your history or your past, or like moving through that, and like kind of addressing, maybe having that honest conversation to say, why have I gotten to this point, and how can I move through it. Well, you move through it, you, you see how that, that trauma you went through, that challenge, how did it benefit you? Mm-hmm. I guarantee you every moment in your life is balanced. Mm-hmm. There is support and there's challenge. It's just that we have, because we're, 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 our animal minds choose to see the, what, the one-sided perception. Mm-hmm. I guarantee you every, every moment in life is balanced. And it's the ability to see that that challenge actually benefited me. It was actually a service to me. Once we open our eyes and open our heart to see that, you'll break through, you'll, you'll dissolve the emotions. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But it sounds so much easier to say it, obviously, to yes, be like, exactly. you need to go so, through so, the challenge. Yes, it's like exactly. the reason why some of the greatest people in the world are the greatest people in the world and they stand out is you... Yeah, because they dissolve it. it. They, they, mm. go, they work through it. Yeah. It's like the one-on-one sessions that you and I are having. Mm-hmm. Yeah. That you get to like isolate and dissolve. Isolate, I mean, yeah. even looking at the... I mean, I think you've mentioned like the Steve Jobs and the Oprah Winfrey's exactly. and... The Elon Musks, it's because they were able to go through the challenges, acknowledge them, accept them, and move through them exactly. that they became who they are. Yes. Okay. Do you have any like advice or steps that you can take to go through these things? Because everyone might be like, oh, there's a problem, but sometimes you don't want to ch- chase, I mean, sometimes you don't want to face it because it is difficult to heart. Like what, I mean, what steps or guidelines, general guidelines would you say to someone, if you've reached this point, this is what you should do or consider doing? I think find a quiet space. Mm-hmm. Take to find a quiet space. Yeah. Sit down. Take a few deep breaths. Yeah. Start to enter the world. Mm-hmm. And start listing how this challenge was a benefit to your life. Mm. How is it a benefit to your highest values? Okay. Yeah. Okay, cool. Yes, that, that, it's just that simple. Okay. If the wires are big enough, the house will take care of itself. Okay, okay. Yes. And do you believe that people should go through a life without challenges? Do you believe that? There is that? not. It's impossible. Okay, okay. So what, are, what, in your opinion, like, what are the benefits of going through challenges? Because anyone... You grow. You grow resilience. Okay. There's resilience. You, you, you grow... You, you be more independent. Mm-hmm. You, you upskill yourself. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, you're just a lot more dependable on yourself. You, you, people look up to you. You, you network better. Um, you, 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 you naturally draw people towards you because you have this confidence which you've developed yourself through your challenges, mm-hmm. and people want to learn from you. Mm-hmm. So through challenges, you actually develop an influence mm-hmm. until you actually learn from the challenges. Um, I, I give I give an example where you see a lot of wealthy parents who who give everything to their kids, they give them the money, the cars, the clothes, um, and, and they're just, just, they're always supporting them. Mm-hmm. And what happens to the, to the kid is they become quite juvenile, they, they're very dependent on their parents, even when they're like 30, 40, 50. Mm-hmm. They're, they're not ambitious. Mm-hmm. If, you, if you look at like Steve Jobs, he, he, was, a, he was an orphan. Mm-hmm. He grew up from a, he grew up poor. If you look at uh, Nelson Mandela, mm. they all went through. If you look at the, the the greats of the world, they they went through hardships in their yeah. life. Yeah, yeah. And that resilience built something. I, I actually was so I was watching some motivational videos and doing some research and my homework. Um, and there was a guy called David Goggin who I think I came across, and he said that to grow you must suffer. Yeah. Which is, I thought, I mean, at first I was just like, no, I don't, I don't want to suffer. Like, I don't want to feel hurt and pain. But if I look back at my life and all of those moments, definitely developed some sort of resilience. Exactly. There was the upside. You're ambitious. Yes, yeah, there was. You want to, you want to, you're doing your own podcast. Mm. You want to form your own company. Mm, I do. Right? Exactly. Yeah. And you are. Yeah. yeah. Because of the hardships that you've been through, mm, mm. and it's about in, and, and if if you don't have, in quotations, challenges, and fill your day with inspired challenges, 
What do you mean by that? So if you, so so Parkinson's law, if if you don't plan your life, mm-hmm. it, it's automatically planned by someone else. Okay. So if you don't plan, if you don't fill your day with inspired action, mm-hmm. your day is going to be automatically filled with actions that you have to be motivated to do. Okay. Do you understand what I'm saying? I do, but break that down a little bit. So inspired action as in like a plan for the day. Oh well, yes, a plan for the day, things that you want to do. Okay. Because if you plan your day, it's easy to say no to others. Mm. Plan your day with things that you naturally want to do. Just plan your day with actions that, that are of value mm-hmm. to your mission, to your purpose. Mm-hmm. So do you believe then in, okay, so obviously that, I mean, it sounds like obviously it's goal setting. So like those short term, medium and long term goals. Are you a big advocate for short, medium and long term goals? Yes. All kinds of goals. Set them, but set them all according to your values. Okay. Don't set them according to, for me, I I I have no value on dancing. I'm not going to set my goals on dancing. Okay. Okay. But wouldn't that push you into the unknown and the extreme of, you know, the uncomfortable? Well, you, yes, but but it's it's motive it's 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 uncomfortable it's it's uninspired uncomfort. Okay. Un- uncomfort. Okay. Okay. I want I want inspired uncomfort. Okay. So so I know I want to see more clients. Mm-hmm. Um, and and so I'm going to fill my challenges. Yes. Yeah. Going out and socializing. Yeah. Yeah. So that's that's in a way that's also a challenge to my life, and then I'm growing in what I want to grow into. Mm, mm. So you ultimately we want to grow into the person you want to become. Okay. So it's about being the person you want to become and not chasing it. Mm. Yes. Okay, wow. So be the person you want to become. Be the person you Maslow, want to become. Maslow said this. Maslow, um, can't remember the quote. Yeah. But he basically, he basically says, be the person you want to become. Be the person you want to become. So turning 27 this year, what have the last seven years of your 20s experience been? What is it? What has the roller coaster of being in your 20s been like? It's got to be my first serious relationship. Mm-hmm. I had a big breakup and that taught me a huge lesson in life. And I, I really went straight into personal development. I read a lot of books and meditated. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, one of the reasons I never had a relationship before was because I, I'd seen what my friends would go through. Mm-hmm. Um, and, and I'd always seen that you know, something's in right here. I mean, they're, they're, they're getting into relationships and they're unhappy. Mm-hmm. Um, then I figured, you know, maybe it's it's not having it's not being in a relationship for the sake of being in a relationship. Being in a relationship to be of service to your mission. Mm-hmm. Um, having a partner to to grow with. Mm-hmm. Um, what do you mean by a service to your mission? That's very interesting. So. I mean, we we ultimately do everything. Uh, we we move a muscle. Mm-hmm. We'll twitch a muscle if we see there's more benefit than drawbacks. Okay. Yeah. I mean, you, you don't want... What I'm really saying is you don't want your partner to hinder your growth. Okay. Yes, that's what I'm saying. Okay. Um, I, I believe that... And my partner and I have talked about this. I don't believe we're there to make each other happy, but we're there to help each other, each other to grow into the person we want to become. Mm. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Are your, do you feel like your visions are very much aligned? It's kind of like a helpmate kind of thing. Well, we help fulfill each other's mission. Okay. Yeah, I okay. understand. If she wants to go to the States and study, by means I don't want to stop her. Okay. Go and do it. Okay. Yeah, I'm not here to hinder her growth. Okay. Um, because I know we all have a mission on this earth and it's to be of service to humanity. Mm. And, but it's being to service of humanity in our own unique way. Yeah. And if she can serve greater numbers of people by going to the States and, and me leaving and staying in South Africa, by means go do it. Mm-hmm. Would you still be, would you consider a long distance relationship yeah, then? Yeah, definitely. Maybe I'd okay. consider moving. Okay. You know, you've got to be flexible with it. Yeah. But yeah. I think, I think ultimately it's never, it's, it's not hindering a person's growth, anyone, anyone's growth. Yeah. To be yeah. the person they want to become. Okay. To be of service to humanity. That's very interesting. Yeah. I like that. I it's like not about that. being, being the happily ever after. Mm. I don't think there is such a thing. Why? Are you not a, you're not a, I'm a hopeless romantic, so I kind of not do why, believe but it's in more of, <laughs> But it's more of like, I mean, if you look at the world, it shows. Mm. I mean, you should look at the stats. I mean, 50% of marriages are, go, go through divorce. Yes, yeah. Um, and, and you look at married couples, some of them are unhappy. I mean, it yeah. shows. I mean, we don't even have to read up about this. We can just open our eyes and see mm. mar- some married couples are not, are not happy. Mm. Divorce rates are quite high. A lot of them go through divorces. Yeah, yeah. And that, that, that's... We can see that with our own eyes. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So happiness doesn't exist. It's just an illusion, I think. 
Oh, wow. Oh, wow. Well. I really want to unpack that. <laughs> Happiness is just... A, I think, I mean, I, I completely agree with you in the, in, in the role of, or when you say rather that you need to be able to serve each other's purposes and help each other grow. Yeah. I do believe in love and I do believe in joy and I do believe in I happiness. Think that's, I think that's I what think love you, is. Yeah. It's, it's, an all, it's not one thing. It's not well, just... It's not just... It's, it's a, when I say I don't believe in happiness, life is not about being happy. Life is about living your mission and, mm. and living a purposeful, inspired life and, and being of service. Mm. It's not about being happy. Okay. The moment you try to be happy, you're going to experience sadness. The moment you experience sadness, so, so it's it, these are emotions, and emotions mm-hmm. are, are they, they're unbalanced. When, they, when I say unbalanced, they, they take us away from our objective path. Mm-hmm. They they cloud our objective mind, our intuition, mm-hmm. from from being objective and making making neutral new, from making neutral thought or neutral um, um, action mm. from inspired action. Okay. Um, but doesn't that then kind of make us almost robot-like? Because I think that to be human is to feel. And to feel every emotion, be it happiness or sadness or, you know, when you're, whatever you're going through and ultimately... I'm not saying eliminate the emotion. Okay. Feelings are very important. Mm. Use the feelings as a feedback. Don't mm. become the emotion. Don't let the emotion run you. Mm. But you must run the, run the emotion. Okay. So that's what I'm saying. Don't let the emotions control you, but control the emotions. Okay. Your emotions are very important. Mm. I'm, not saying become a, I'm not saying become a robot. Okay. Become uh, a, a machine and work 24-7. I, th- I think having emotions is very important. Mm. They're, but they're there to be of service to us as, as a means of feeding back to us what's going on in our lives. Mm. Adjusting our plans mm. I think that's the purpose of emotions okay okay yeah. and I know you've read extensively about this I know personal development is very important to you um, but also I want to know like at what point did it become important for you because what point like what was what was the tipping point for you to go actually this is one thing that I really want to learn about I think it comes back to to my childhood um, I mean my father I, I resented my father for, for not being there for me emotionally um but he was supporting me in his own way, mm. um, financially, and yeah. And I, I never saw I never saw the balance. Mm. But then I started understanding. You know why? I started accepting my father for who he was. See, no in self, no amount of self improvement makes up for lack of self acceptance. See, my father is the way he is. Mm-hmm. So it's not about changing him. It's about changing my attitude, my perception in the way I see him. Mm. So what I started seeing is, whoa, actually. I'm Googling all this stuff. I'm YouTubing all of this personal development stuff. Um, so yeah, so answering your question, I think it was the perception where the, the, the lack of fatherhood, in quotation mm. marks. But his lack of fatherhood actually fathered me into being, going, diving straight into personal development and helping others mm. um, in, in personal development. Mm. So his this service was actually a service to me it's changing perception yeah yeah completely and up until our last session that we had together which is very interesting is I when I was doing my own research and stuff I started trying to look at the positives of the things that I saw as the most not negative but as things that I didn't enjoy about where I was in my period of life right now yeah so I started looking up like the benefits of being single and the benefits of having certain fears in my life and the benefits of being quite overweight when I was in high school Mm -hmm. and how all of those challenges have developed my character and who I am today. Yes. And those were things that I won't lie, I think had kept me quite, not isolated, but to a certain extent ashamed and very like kind of like self withdrawn a lot. Um, but now being able to acknowledge it and say it with, you know, great power, not the most confident in certain elements and aspects, but I'm in control of it and, and it doesn't control me. So I think it comes back to what you were saying about the emotions. It's like you can go through and acknowledge it, but it doesn't control me. It doesn't consume me like it used to. Yes, yes. So you seeing, are you seeing how your drawbacks in your life started being benefits to you? Yes. Yes, perfect. Yes. Yeah. yeah, exactly. And made me who I am today, and still am. It's not. It's not like everything is perfect, but I think it's 
acknowledging the journey, being able to reflect on the journey and go, yes, that was hurtful, and yes, I was afraid and scared and didn't know that this is how it's going to turn out. Yeah, exactly. True wisdom is seeing that for every crisis, instantaneous, there's actually a blessing. Mm. Every crisis is a blessing. Mm. Yeah, that's what true wisdom is. The seeing the life on two, that, that there's seeing, seeing the two sides of the leaf at once. Mm. True love, as John says, this is his definition of love from John DiMartini. Love is the, is the synthesis and synchronicity of complementary opposites. Mm. So, so love is, is a synthesis of feelings. It's happy and sadness all at once. It's not only being happy, it's not only being sad. It's not seeing the happiness and seeing the sadness at a different time. Mm. But it's seeing the happiness and sadness at once. Seeing disrespect and respect at once. Seeing uh, unreliable and reliable at once. It's about balanced, it's about balanced thoughts, not one-sided, lopsided perceptions. Mm. Not one-sided thoughts. Mm. That's so true. I love it. I love that balance. I love that balance. And I think something that you also previously said to me is if you don't accept the balance, you don't accept the person or the situation yes. for... For what it is. For what it is. I mean, we, we dwell so much on our pasts and on our history. We, looked, we look at how we have been, been a victim. Mm. But no matter what we do, we can't change the past. Mm. So why not use the past to feel our destinies and become masters of our destinies instead of, instead of victims of, of our history. Mm. Yeah. That's beautiful. Sure. Um, second last question is on your quarter life crisis. So can you pinpoint, can you take me back? I know how you like to envision and you're always like, take me back to a time. So take me back to a time where you felt like you had a quarter life crisis moment. Explain it, what had happened and how did you come out of it? So, so this was before me, when I had my quarter life crisis, this was before uh, I knew about this whole balance thing and mm -hmm. having certification in, in personal, in, in life coaching. Yeah. Um, this John, John Martini certification. And yeah, it, 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 they gave me an offer and then, then I walked ar around the waterfront I called up Nick Skeen, a close friend of mine. <laughs> I'm like, shit, dude. Like, I don't know if I should do this. Mm. I think I want to carry on studying. Mm. Um, and I was quite certain my parents would be against me studying. Was I think they, they wanted me to go out and see what reality was like. Yeah. Um, and stop avoiding and running away. Um, so how I got out of it was just phoning, phoning my friend and asking, like, what should I do? And he said, you know, just go out and experience it. You know, you can always just say. You know, just, just quit. Mm -hmm. So yeah, I had a friend who just said, just go try it out. And I had my pressure of the parents. And mm -hmm. my girlfriend at the time had started working already. And I'm like, shit, <laughs> no way. <laughs> and um, yeah, she's a doctor. And I'm like, crap, I need to start making cash. <laughs> so definitely yeah. had that level of pressure as well. So it's definitely pressure from external pressure, mm. um, pressurizing me in, into working. Mm -hmm. um, and I, I look back, I'm like, shit, it's, it's, I'm grateful. Yeah, you know, I'm yeah. grateful that I've started working because it's what, it's, it's what pays for my courses. Yeah, yeah. And the books that I read. Yeah. Mm. And the alternative would have been you being an academic? Probably would have been studying and mm -hmm. carried on running away. Mm -hmm. And your girlfriend, like, yeah, funding, exactly. you, funding, funding your ways. Exactly. <laughs> That's funny. Um, and then, so what I want to know is, like, what advice do you have ultimately for people in their 20s? Um, I guess ultimately, because a lot of this has been about, you know, motivation, inspiration, the life journey itself, the balance of the emotions, um, all encompassing, I guess, everything that we have discussed, what advice do you have for people in their 20s who are on this 20, 20s journey of self-discovery? I was going to say travel. Travel. I think it's quite important. I mean, Jackie Chan said... So someone asked Jackie Chan, what's the greatest advice you, could, you would give others? And he said, travel, because time can never come back, but money does come back. Um, <laughs> so definitely travel. Mm. Um, and, and I think get to know who you are. Get to know what inspires you, what you enjoy doing. I, th I think get to know that. Get a journal, write, write as often as you can. And set goals that, you're, that, that are aligned to your values. Mm. Don't set goals that that are not you. If, if 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 you're a dancer, do goals that if you love dancing and you enjoy dancing, set goals that are of dancing. 
set goals like I want to I want to do learn tango mm. in in this in this amount of time whatever it is mm-hmm. don't go set goals of of being I don't know an, an Olympic athlete mm-hmm. so set goals according to who you are mm. I think that's what happens that's one of the reasons why we fell at New Year's resolutions because we just don't set our goals according to who we are mm-hmm. who we're meant to be. Mm-hmm that help us to achieve what we want to achieve. Yeah, yeah. We set goals that are completely in a different direction. Yeah. Yeah, and we're all unique in our own way. Yeah, and I think, I think travel and mm-hmm. read and just know who you are. I think mm-hmm. that's the greatest advice. But how do you, how do you, you know, there's that saying that people are like, just go out and be yourself and, you know, so et, how cetera, do you, et cetera, Exactly, so I think, I think being yourself is, when people say be yourself, I think it's the shittest advice mm. one could give. <laughs> it's great advice, but... The Greeks said, know thyself, be thyself, love thyself. So before being, we need to first know. What does knowing ourselves mean? Knowing ourselves mean? It means knowing your values, knowing what inspires you, mm. knowing what surrounds you and, and, and you get inspired by, knowing what you're willing to put your money on, mm. knowing you know, what do you read up naturally? What do you read up about? What do you Facebook and what do YouTube about? What do you... What do you spend your time on? Those are the questions that really determine what inspires you. Mm. And you follow that. You follow it through. And uh, you set goals according to those values. Yeah. So, so, so know yourself and, and be yourself and, and be thyself. So, so, so once you've known what your values are, act on them, be them. And then from being them, I, I guarantee you, you'll live a more inspirational a more balanced life and you'd want to carry on living what you've set out to do know thyself be thyself love thyself what an incredible penny drop epiphany moment perfect way to end this episode of the in my 20s podcast thank you so much jerry for coming onto today's show and sharing some incredible wisdom there were so so many mind moments one that happened earlier on in the show you said that no amount of self-improvement makes up for a lack of self-acceptance and it was at that moment for me where the penny kind of dropped and I was like oh my goodness oh my mind moment Um, because it's so true it's just like we do all of these things in life to make ourselves look better yes we go to the gym and yes we read thousands of books and we have master's degrees and doctorate degrees and we just want to be accepted in the world but if you do not accept yourself if you are not able to look in the mirror and say i love you flaws and all then there is nothing that you could possibly do that can make yourself love yourself know thyself be thyself love thyself love the quote tweet it tweet it tweet it um so thank you so much jerry for coming on today's show um guys please follow us on instagram on twitter on facebook please share the posts like the posts comment on the posts and don't forget to listen to the in my 20s podcast we are available on soundcloud itunes and youtube i cannot wait until we start filming so you can see some behind the scenes stuff it is in the pipelines it's in the mind and the vision and the dream of those who are part of the production team which is me myself and i all three of us go team anyway we look forward to seeing you same time same place right here on In My Twenties. In my twenties, in my twenties. How old are you? I stop counting when I turn 25. But I'm still in my twenties.